Ahoy mates, Julie here, and welcome to Monday's episode of The Voters TV. First up today in our smooth sailing segment, we meet an adventurous couple on a three-year voyage for the sake of, uh, research. Reed Stowe, a 55-year-old sailor and professional adventurer, I wonder how one earns that title, is currently conducting a thousand-day, shall we call it, research mission in order to offer what he hopes is constructive insight into the possible hardships and undertakings of space travel. Say, more specifically, a mission to Mars. That's right. At sea since April, Stowe and his 24-year-old girlfriend, Sonia Ahmad, who, by the way, never stepped foot on a boat prior to meeting Stowe four years ago, are sailing just the two of them aboard the 70-foot schooner Anne through the South Atlantic. They're attempting to stay at sea beyond the sight of land until 2010, communicating with civilization solely via satellite phone. Stowe calls his project the Mars Ocean Odyssey because he thinks the journey will provide valuable lessons for a manned flight to Mars when astronauts would be confined to a small vessel for two to three years, separated from terra firma and most of humanity. During the trip, Stowe and Ahmad will not refuel their ship, nor restock on food or other supplies. In fact, solar panels and generators are built into the schooner and to provide power. Thus far, here's one thing Stowe says he's learned. That for a long journey, you don't want an aggressive, overachieving jet pilot. In this case, Stowe concludes that an astronaut with the right stuff would be quiet and meditative. Someone who would take satisfaction from small daily tasks and who could while away the hours staring at the stars. Oh, and by the way, Stowe has said he and Ahmad plan to guide their ship on a heart-shaped pattern, as an artistic statement, of course. Space, sailing, and uh, even psychology enthusiasts can follow the Thousand Days at Sea project through its website at www.1000days.net where you can also check blog posts that they email in by their satellite phone. And for a more entertaining take on the expedition, the users over at the Sailing Anarchy Forum are, as you can imagine, having a field day with this one. If you're in the mood for some laughs, head on over to SailingAnarchy.com. Go to the forums and do a search on 1000 Days. Next up, it's on to Power Play, where rather than looking ahead to future space trips to Mars, we take a look to the past and what back in 1958 seemed like an out-of-this-world vision of the future with regard to private yacht ownership. I stumbled across a really interesting blog connected to the website paleo-future.com, a site dedicated to the futures that never were. They feature there some interesting examples from a syndicated Sunday comic strip by Arthur Radabaugh that ran in newspapers from 1958 to 1963 called Closer Than We Think, which gave information on ideas that seemed to be just on the horizon in this post-World War II era of optimistic glances to the future. Ideas such as push-button education, wristwatch TV, hello, iPod Nano, and pogo police cars were featured in the series. And on July 20th, 1958, the Chicago Tribune ran this Closer Than We Think strip, showing that not only would every family of the future have their own yacht, it would be powered by the family car. Calling it the poor man's yacht, the caption reads, the luxury of yachting may be within the reach of almost everyone in the world of tomorrow. The copy suggests that, quote, mass production of low-cost plastic hulls will be made possible by the use of guns that spray the plastic, similar to the fiber resin depositor as conceived by the Rand Development Corporation. The description predicts that, based on this, the family car might just be used in the future as the motive power for boats, whereby the yachtsman would simply drive his auto into the cradle of this new marine creation, allowing the car's engine to run the boat. It suggested that the rear wheels could rest on a roller linked to the propeller, and then all the driver would have to do is put the car in gear, step on the accelerator, and presto, he'd be yachting. Hmm, 
Well, when you think about it, it's not too far off from an invention we've seen pretty recently. Remember the Aquata back in episode 19? And finally today, in our Just for the Hull of It segment, I wonder if Arthur Radabaugh could have fathomed the next future floating trend we have to show you. For those of you who like to live close to the water, you can't get much closer than this. Okay, regular TBTV viewers might recall episodes 28 and 29 when I revealed the little crush I have on houseboats and the idea of owning or possibly renting them for a fun holiday getaway. But this type of houseboat wasn't really what I had in mind. Yet, anyway. Introducing the Aqua Domi, a modular system of floating houses that give the owners the unique opportunity to create a life in, or rather, atop the water. The company's calling Aquadomi the houseboat of the future because it's module based and therefore gives the owner the possibility to create his own house exactly the way he wants it. The houseboats feature contemporary architecture equipped with luxury comforts. So unlike the luxury yachts and houseboats we've shown you in past episodes, the Aquadomi line is geared more towards aesthetic artistic structures on water with a homely feel. These houseboats are also connected to the public infrastructure for water, wastewater, electricity, telephone, community antenna, and internet. Check out the different architectural designs at the company's website, www.aquadomi.dk, where you'll see they've already constructed quite a few floating cafes and restaurants using these same design principles. Now how's that for a creative solution to the growing problem of urban congestion? And that's a wrap on this episode of the Boaters TV. Join us back here on Wednesday, and until then, safe and happy boating to you all. Take care. This episode of The Boaters TV has been brought to you by the word outboard, which means toward or beyond the boat's sides, or it refers to a detachable engine mounted on a boat's Stern.